Hey Clock and Crew, Lisa Clock with you girl Lo once again. And in this video, I just want to talk to you guys about EarthNet's going on. So, let's just talk. So, this video, if you do enjoy it, please just continue watching it. I would love if you could comment. I would love to have open discussion. And this video is kind of be, it's going to be like a Q&A setup. My sister sent me some questions just about everything that's going on from police brutality, George Floyd, racism, um, the Black Lives Matter movement. And I want to answer those questions and have you guys respond back. So uh, this video was originated for me and my husband, who are a racial couple. But um, he has he has he has the right words to say and the right heart emotion. But I think sometimes he can get really he can get kind of caught up behind the camera and people's opinions and the debates surrounding each topic we're going to discuss. That his response can come out choppy and just like not the way he wants to deliver them these are his words this these topics are too important and too close to his heart for his responses to not be clear effective and impacting so we're working on you know him maybe doing a part two video with me where he's in it but for part one today we're going to we're just going to talk about these we're going to answer these questions i'm going to answer these questions so Let's get right into this. How do you both feel about the general sense of Black Lives Matter movement? Do you guys support it? So I can speak first both. We both most definitely support the movement. But for me, on why my my general my true feeling about just this, the general sense of this movement, it's very groundbreaking and impacting. And the reason why I think this is because if you look at American history as a whole, from prison from slavery, from lynching, blackface, black blackface, um, colorism, how black people are portrayed in media, music, TV, how dark skinned people are portrayed in media, music, and TV, segregation in jobs, segregation in schools. The list can go on and on. You've been told your whole life you don't matter. You are poverty, you are easy money, um, you are less than, you are inferior, and don't ever think about being an equal. Don't think about that. You've been you've been told your whole life you don't matter. And if you came from a very supporting, loving black family who constantly told you that and you just knew your whole life that you do matter, that's great for you. I'm not knocking I'm that's awesome. But talking about the whole America message thrown. You don't matter. And I love this movement because it's just first off, because it's name, it makes a bold statement that we do matter. You have value, your opinion is important, your life is important, your story is what you care for, what drives you, your passions, your dreams, all that matters, your history, all of that matters. And it brings this unity in the black community. And I love that the statement is black lives matter. There's no gray area, there's no compromise. It's just to the point. And I feel like in a world where everything is such a gray area and there's so many ways to break down something. I love that it's so to the point that people, it's true core, you can't mess with it. It's pure and it's honest. And I love it. How have you both been a part of the movement? Well, me and Andrew, we both are involved with protesting. We both are on the cleaning committee of our city. Our city got very destroyed during a lot of the riots. So the people who go in there who clean the graffiti walls, who pick up the glass, clean the ashes of burning cars. Uh, we signed up to be on that committee, so we're part of that. We um, are constantly educating each other. I think that has a lot to do with, I think that has a lot to do with being a part of the movement. When you're bouncing off in a healthy way to understand things like police brutality more, racism, get personal experience, testimonies. And I love that me and Andrew do that. We, you know, we watch documentaries, we listen to TED Talks. Before the virus broke out, we were starting to go to seminars and lectures, all these exact things. Um, so yeah, I'm also too having an open space to talk to people about it who are not interracial or who are white and, or, you know, who are Hispanic, Asian. And honestly, this is how diverse our friend group is. And we try our hardest to find opportunities to bring these things to light. Cause it it produces so it produces it produces so much healing and more understanding and more empathy when you just talk about these things. So yes, yeah, so I protesting cleaning committee, 
educating each other, watching films, documentaries, listening to lectures on this stuff, on these on these issues, and just having open discussion with our peers, even if it might be awkward, even if it might be hard to do, we do it. And as much as we can, and it's not easy. We're be- we're definitely learning how to be better about that. And um, oh yeah, and also too, just know that just know who you're voting for. And I don't presidential presidential election is very important too, but also locally who you're voting for. That's just as, that's just as important. So uh, yes, that's how we're involved. Um, yes, okay. And number three. Do you think there's a thing of police brutality or does it just waver or even favor in the media on what's going on? I believe that police brutality is a real thing. It's not no myth. Me and Andrew have both. When people were pulled over, we have stayed in like a close range visually to make sure nothing goes wrong. We have done that. Um, for me, I think the media uses, because right now police brutality is a trending topic when trending for America, when in black communities, you are told from the, you are told from a very young age, don't disrespect the police, don't get out of hand with them. And especially too, if you have parents, grandparents, even parents who are very involved with the civil rights movement or things of things under that, you are, you are told stories on how police got out of hand and the movies you watch. They, they tell that too, that police are corrupt and, and they're brutal and they'll abuse their power. So you're, you're con- that's, that was, that's already built in your psyche growing up as a black person. That's already in your psyche. So it's not trending to us. It's not no new news. But I guess you could say it's trending now and it's new to people. So I feel like the media uses a way to feed off of that. And I don't agree with that because I'm like, black lives getting taken it's not no way for you to get a bigger coin or bigger views. This is not, it's not clickbait. It's, it, no. So for, let me, let me reel back in. So, yeah. That's how I feel like media plays a way in it. Uh, yes. I don't, yes. So that's how, yes, that's what I would say about that. I kind of, I don't really know. Me and Andrew talk about this, but I don't, I don't think I ever, I don't, I, he believes police brutality is real. But I don't think I ever asked him, like, what does he think of, like, media's hand in it? So, that, I hope I made sense. Hope I didn't get too much in a rant where it wasn't clear what I was trying to say. So, all right. So, number four. How has the death of George Floyd affected you guys individually and together? Um, I, for me, individually, when I first saw the video with George Floyd, I had so much hate and anger. I mean, I had so, I was like, oh, so we're united. We're a united nation, but this stuff is happening always. And my heart just broke. And it's still broken. And, uh, you know, it's just sad. Like, this man, he's never going to be able to walk his daughter down the aisle for prom. He's just, he's never going to be able to do that, ever. And his life was just rocked in the most... In one of the most exploited, brutal ways I think I've ever seen on film. It was just awful. And uh, I guess the frustration too, because you're like, okay, well, is he even going to get justice? Because this, this always happens and it, it just vanishes two weeks. And it's like the like police brutality shootings. And when they shoot someone black, when it's caught, on film, if that's from someone's phone, from the police officer's like body cam, from a car, whatever the case may be, it's like, oh yeah, in two weeks this story's gonna be gone. And I, I think that was my frustration too with George Floyd. It's like, okay, well, is, is this gonna be gone? Because there's no way to debate a gun. This police officer used his knee, a part of his body, to do that. Is it? Are we just gonna find a way to make excuses and it's gonna fade away? So I think that was where a lot of my frustration was coming from too. And my, I feel like, I don't know, have you ever, some, have you ever had anything that's like so heavy on you that you don't have like a big way to explain how you feel? And that's how I feel with George Floyd. It's, sh- my heart broke. My heart, I'm so broken by it. I'm so mad. I'm so, I'm so rage. I'm, 
Yeah, so that's, and I know for, and I, I know it hurt Andrew too. Of course, him, you're very different, and we express, you know, we express things very differently. But he, he was, he's very heartbroken by it, and just very like, he's just getting fed up of the blindness of his peers of America. He's getting, he's getting very fed up with the trend of Black lives getting shot, and then it's just forgotten about. He's getting real fed up with that, like. It's just like back to back, and then we act like it's nothing. Like, oh yeah, it's just another black person getting shot, and he's getting real tired of that. Like, as if these people have no value to themselves. Like, like as if their life had no meaning, and because he has came across people who said that exact thing. Oh, she's another black person getting shot. So I I think that's just where his so he's so tired of like. How many more lives need to be taken for us to see this is a problem? Yeah. So, um, together as a couple, it has been extremely hard because you're black, he's white. Okay, I'm black, he's white. But you're still wife and husband. And you still want to make sure you're communicating with each other, but it gets hard because I'm, as a black woman, I'm fed up, I'm mad with it, I'm, I'm, this has been my. This has been a part of me growing up. It's on. It's now. It's on media. And these are George Floyd was something that was caught on film. Imagine all the cases that aren't caught on film, and you just have this. You just have like this bundle of just rage. And then he's so. He, Andrew's still. Try, you know, he's still trying to be a husband, but you know he's a white husband, so he can't always relate to the core with everything. But he's trying to have understanding with you and have you talk with him. But I'm like, like when I get mad, I don't always talk on how I'm feeling I get very like shut down and then he's trying to pull things out of me so I'm getting annoyed because it's a touchy subject and it just I, I know it goes like in the snowball effect so I think as a couple in the beginning it was like dividing us like I was real tense and upset he was real tense and upset but it's like we weren't talking to each other after you kind of calm down and you know that this is still my husband and I love him. I need to talk to him about how I'm feeling. And she's my wife. And I need to talk to her about how I'm feeling. I feel like then you're able to come together and really make impact. It was not until that weekend when we finally talked to each other. And we're like, let's just go for a protest. We're going to go protest. And then that began to open us up to talking to each other again. So I feel like that's what affected, it affected us as a couple. We got like into arguing. For like it divided us at first, and I don't know if it was our maturity, our age. I don't. Know, it just divided us first, but now I feel like it's now creating this bigger bond between us. When we know we need to make a change, we need to be a part of an impact. Um, for George Floyd, for his family, for all the black women and men who are just abandoned and forgotten, and uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. All right. So. Do you think there's a possibility that racism would end? Mm. Dang. Do I think racism will end? I would like to think that, but I don't know if it will. And the reason why I say that is because Racism is definitely a generational change, a generational teaching that goes down from generation to generation. And so that's one that you got to think about. Okay, then you got to look at every single home that's teaching these kind of things. And then, uh, I don't know. And I don't, I don't. And then you got to look at the, you know, the economic, the political systems, the government, the government's way of operating that allow segregation oppression to be a part of its function. You gotta look at things like that. And um, you gotta look at people's hearts. You know, how's our school educating about racism and slavery and America's history? Are we selling lies and myths? So, yeah, I feel like it's definitely gonna get, I feel like it's gonna get better. We, have, we definitely have a long way to go, but then it's like humans, 
human, human mankind, we, we can just have hateful tended. We can have, we can be hateful and we can see ourselves as better than, than someone else. So I, I don't know. I really don't know. I don't, maybe someone else can have a comment in the section. I don't know if racism will ever end. No. Mm -mm. Cause I feel like you're always going to have that group of people that think backwards and they're so, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. That's kind of a hard question. I don't think, I don't, right now how things are looking like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's fully ever going to be gone from the whole earth as a whole or from our nation. Mm, I don't think so. Because humankind can just be awful and we can be so wicked. Yeah, that's just, okay, that's my honest response. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. How do you feel about racism or, or any equality of the sort? It's, com it's a mere, it's, it's, it's humans. One of, it's like our worstest quality. It's our, it's our most awful part of us, in my opinion. It's awful. I, I do, I dedicate so much of my time and my mind and myself to facing this giant of racism and discrimination and inequality. I truly do. It's pursuing my degree. I'm constantly reading. I'm talking to people about it all the time. Part of this YouTube channel is a part of, is a, exactly on these things. And, uh, yeah, I know. And Andrew, he... He feels the same exact way as I do. Exact same way. We just, it's awful. But um, let me tell you. All. Okay, so me and Andrew, we have both lived in a total of four states. And uh, every state we have dealt with something racist from someone. If it's intentionally done or not intentionally done. So, but they're all intentionally done, okay? And, um... We have been kicked out of we have been kicked out of a restaurant in Florida for being interracial. Um, we were going to my we were going to I think it was Miami or Orlando for a honeymoon. We were driving and we had to look up before we left, we had to look up active KKK counties. And I remember Andrew having to put me under a blanket in a car because we were driving through a county that we had we had to drive to this county to get where get to where we were going. And I remember not even, we didn't even, we didn't stop for gas in this county a whole 45 minutes. I mean, under a blanket. So, you know, and I've been called the N-word. I have been, I have been told, we kind of removed from a liquor store in Minnesota. Um, you know, Andrew's been, Andrew's been given really ignorant, really sexual, disgusting jokes about being with someone black. Um, I have been told, oh, are you sitting with the devil? Are you, are you sitting with your oppressor? Are you in your oppressor power? Just stuff like that. Um, and so, of course, no, we, we know from personal experience. We're, no, we do, we're doing all we can now to not sit and just be monotone in the middle and comfortable with inequality and racism. We're not doing that no more. You know, and with him and me just both, both being humans, who heart breaks for another human and for voices that are ignored and pain that's overlooked and a, uh, the sin of racism and what it is, the awfulness of what it is, him and me, we're not, we're not gonna sit there and do nothing no more, no. This is not gonna be a trend. Hitting racism at the at the core to destroy it as much as we possibly can in our lifetime has now became a part of our lifestyle. And that's what I can say about it. So I really hope this video made sense. I hope that it was more of me just talking with you, relating with you. Um yeah, we cry. We cry about these things. We feel about these things. We're not we're not gonna shy away from our emotions with it. So I, I love you guys. I thank you so much for the support. I really hope I'm happy that um, I'm kind of getting out this funk again and I love that I have this YouTube platform to get out truth and injustice and know that police brutality is real. 
we need to face racism head on. Um, black, white, Latina, Asian, Puerto Rican, whatever, whatever the case may be, y'all. If you're from the north, south, east, west, we all need to do all we can to destroy this plague that is taunting and cursing this nation. It needs to be discussed. Police brutality, all of it, you guys, all of it needs to be put at hand. This cannot be a trend. This cannot be gone within two weeks. We cannot forget George Floyd. We cannot. 